producer price index. The producer price index shows the month-to-month -month changes in the average prices paid by producers and manufacturers of goods during different stages of production. Similar to the consumer price index, which uses a basket of goods to measure the prices paid by consumers, the producer price index uses a benchmark basket of goods to measure the changes in wholesale prices. The producer price index is the first economic report on inflation released each month and it is considered by many, including myself, to be the best leading indicator for long-term inflation because when production costs increase, it is only logical to assume that it will cause retail prices to increase down the line. The producer price index is reported monthly by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I'll post a link for the report in the text next to the video. Each month, more than 9,000 indexes containing over 100,000 price quotations are grouped into three major indexes. The first category is the commodity index, or simply the crude index. This measures the prices of raw materials, which are used in the first stages of production. Any changes in cost at this stage may be passed on to the next stages. The second category is the stage of processing index, or simply the intermediate index. This measure goods that have had some manufacturing or other processes done to them, yet are still sold to other manufacturers and producers to create finished goods. Any changes in cost at this stage may be passed on to the final stage. The last category is the industry index or simply the finished goods category. This measures the cost of goods used in the final stages of production. Any changes in cost at this stage may be passed on to the consumer. The report has two main tables, A and B. Each table also has two charts, one with the data seasonally adjusted and one with the data not seasonally adjusted. At the end of the report are five follow-up tables that break the data down from the first two tables into much more detail. Table A shows the total month-to-month -month percentage change in prices from each of the previous 12 months for finished goods. This is the most significant part of the report and it is the main statistic reported in the media each month. The finished goods section is the final production stage for goods that are being made re ready for sale to the consumer. While the data shows mixed results for the short term, on a longer time frame, there is a strong correlation between increases in costs in the finished goods section and increases in nationwide inflation. Next to the total changes in costs for finished goods are sections for foods, energy, and a section called except food and energy. The except food and energy section is also known as the core producer price index. Because the prices of food and energy are very volatile and fluctuate a lot, the core producer price index section leaves the two, these two categories out. Some economists feel this section gives a more accurate picture of the economy and feel this section is the section that should be more closely monitored. Food and energy are also listed as separate categories because changes in cost for these two categories have such a large impact in so many areas. Next to the core PPI number is the total percentage change in prices from the previous year for each of the last 12 months. This allows one to view short-term changes in price from month to month and longer term changes in prices from a year earlier. Next to that is the month to month changes in total prices for intermediate goods and the month to month total changes in price for crude goods. Table B gives more detailed data from the intermediate and crude stages. You can see the changes in monthly costs for food and energy, the changes in core costs for the intermediate and crude stages, and the yearly changes in total cost for the intermediate and crude stages. At the end of the report are five more tables that group the data into different categories. Table 1, producer price indexes and percent changes by state of processing. Table 2, producer price indexes and percent changes for selected commodity groupings by stage of processing. Table 3, producer price indexes for selected commodity groupings. Table 4, producer price indexes for the net output of selected industries and industry groups not seasonally adjusted. And Table 5, producer price indexes 
by stage of processing seasonally adjusted. In these tables, the data is grouped together different ways, including different stages of production, different commodities, different industries and sectors. The data is presented seasonally adjusted and is presented not seasonally adjusted. These tables give more specific insight as to which areas are being affected the most from price changes. So that's the producer price index. In my view, the best available resource for estimating longer term inflation. When you see changes in the trends for prices paid for raw goods, Watch to see what effect it has on the processing stage. When you see changes in the trends for cost during the processing stage, watch to see what effect it has on the finished goods section. When you see changes in the trends for cost during the finished goods stage, most likely inf inflation will follow. There is some debate on how long the lag time is between changes in cost during the finished goods stage and changes in the level of inflation. When attempting to gauge the lag time, economists will look at things like inventory levels, GDP growth, interest rates, the balance of payments, income levels, and hours worked. In other words, when wholesale cost goes up, economists will try and gauge how much demand is there and how much the demand will decline when inflation increases.